In this tutorial, we will discuss about the human respiratory system. And what points will we discuss? Let us know that first of all. We will discuss with you about the respiration. What is respiration? We will define the respiration. And the second point, we will discuss the breathing and respiration. Means, what is the basic difference between the breathing and respiration? We will know that very basic difference. And in the third point, we will be talking about the respiratory passage. Means, the path for the respiratory system. We will know about that path, the entire path. We will discuss about that. And in the fourth point, we will talk about the types of the respiration. We'll discuss the external, internal, and cellular respirations. Okay, we'll discuss all these three types. And in the cellular respiration, we'll be talking about the aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And in the fifth point, we'll be discussing about the shape of the lungs. That what is the shape of the lungs actually? We'll talk about that. And in the sixth point, we'll be discussing about the parts of the respiratory system. Now let's proceed from the very first point. That is respiration what is respiration simple the breakdown of the food to release the energy we have the food now we'll just do the breakdown of the food into smaller components in order to obtain the energy in short when you just break the food into pieces in order to obtain the energy this process is called as respiration now some guys they just increase the term oxygen while defining the respiration remember one very important point regarding this definition if you add the oxygen in this definition then your this definition will become specific for a specific type of the respiration here we have one two three types and if you are adding the oxygen then that definition will be actually specific for this aerobic respiration so i suggest you guys not to add the term oxygen in the definition of the respiration if you don't add oxygen then your definition will become valid for all the types of the respiration and then it is further up to you if you want to then elaborate the definition then you can just increase the words like oxygen for the aerobic and uh, without oxygen for the anaerobic we will discuss now these aerobic and anaerobic respiration later now let's come towards the definition once again now what is the definition of the uh, respiration simple the breakdown of the food to obtain the energy atp now why do we obtain energy for the daily activities means we obtain the energy from the food that we eat in order to perform the daily activities that's it so simple easy once again the breakdown of the food to release the energy is respiration number one point clear now let's come towards the second point that is the breathing and respiration what is the main difference between the breathing and respiration very simple just concentrate breathing in the breathing we are just doing the exchange of the gases by means of the inhalation and exhalation what type of gases are involved here when we are inhaling we're actually inhaling oxygen gas okay in the meanwhile we are inhaling other gases also i'm not going to talk about those gases okay just concentrate oxygen and carbon dioxide now in this entire lecture so when we inhale we're actually inhaling oxygen and when we exhale we're just exhaling the carbon dioxide gas out from our body so just simple if you are just doing the exchange of the gases by means of the inhalation and exhalation this is called as breathing now it is called respiration very simple we do the exchange of the gases by means of this exchange if that gas actually goes for the food breakdown means if that gas actually breaks down the food and that results in the production of the energy that kind of process is known as respiration what is breathing simple exchange of the gases now what is respiration exchange of the gases plus breakdown of the food plus energy production this is called as respiration this is the weird difference here we just do exchange of the gases here we do the exchange of the gases and we get as a result energy the very basic difference between the breathing and respiration now let's come towards the next point that is the respiratory passage the path followed for the respiration you can say the path for the respiration is called as respiratory passage now what is the path it actually starts from the nostrils and the mouth from here you inhale okay suppose we inhaled oxygen here now this oxygen will travel through the pharynx then from the larynx here we have the epiglottis this epiglottis plays a very important function regarding the air and food we eat okay so you know that we eat through the mouth and we inhale also to the mouth and nostril and the path is just a kind of one so in the meanwhile 
if any uh, food particle or any large particle is entering into the body so then here we have uh, a block kind of system for the those large particles then due to that large size particle this epiglottis will close this the tracheal system the tracheal tube the wind pipe and then that large particle will enter into the esophagus then that will become the part of the digestive system then that particle will be processed by means of the GIT you can say and is this large size particle passes down into the esophagus then this epiglottis will reopen and it will allow the air to move into the uh, wind pipe and uh, then the air will enter uh, into the, this wind pipe known as trachea then this trachea is actually composed of the uh, you can say c-shaped rings incomplete rings made up of the cartilage which is actually supporting your this trachea that this trachea might not collapse okay for that sake this trachea is provided with the cartilage made incomplete rings so after that when the trachea reaches the lungs it will divide into two branches known as bronchi then these bronchi will divide into bronchioles further primary secondary and tertiary and as they reach the terminal point terminal bronchioles they will actually connect with the air sacs known as alveoli we have number of air sacs okay now these are actually called as alveoli and one is called as alveolus now here is actually the exchange of the gases gonna happen how like let's zoom this one one alveolus now we here we have alveoli now we're just going to zoom just one now here is our one alveolus consider that oxygen you inhaled reached your this alveolus now here this alveolus is having a connection with the blood vessels known as capillaries and before we move towards the exchange that how the exchange is going to happen let me tell you people about the composition of alveoli first alveoli is composed of the two types of the cells the regular cells type 1 pneumocytes these blue are actually the regular cells and these you can see the darker one these are called as type 2 pneumocytes these cells are responsible to release the surfactants and that release surfactant is then actually a kind providing the ease in the exchange of the gases means exchange of the gases will then become easy so you can see that here surfactant is actually uh, decreasing the surface tension so for that sake then the gases will exchange very easily now let's understand the exchange of the gases so the inhaled oxygen when it reaches the alveolus it will first of all diffuse from the alveolus into the blood blood vessels capillaries then from the blood vessels blood vessels this will diffuse into the tissue fluid and then from the tissues it will diffuse into the cells and like this there will be a kind of exchange of the gases happening now let's know how the exchange actually takes place simple oxygen will enter and carbon dioxide will move so now let's understand how oxygen is entering into the body First of all, oxygen will do the exchange with the carbon dioxide gas from the alveolus to the blood present in the capillaries. Then from here, this oxygen will do the exchange with the carbon dioxide gas present in the tissue fluid. So then from the blood, the oxygen will enter into the tissue fluid then from into the tissue fluid, it will then move into the cells. So like this, it is undergoing three steps. And then these three steps are actually named as three types of the respiration the one is called as external respiration second is called as internal respiration and the third is called as cellular respiration how like external one the exchange of the gases between the alveolus and the blood is called as external respiration alveolus and the blood if here exchange takes place now you can use and we do use another term for the external respiration that is the breathing here the exchange of the gases is happening and so do as here in the external respiration is the gases exchange happening external respiration and the breathing you can use these interchangeably and regarding internal point of view here the exchange is actually happening between the blood which is present in the capillaries and the tissue fluid here fluid is present okay now here the exchange is happening so such exchange is named as internal respiration the exchange of the gases between the blood and the tissue fluid is called as internal respiration and from the tissue fluids then the oxygen will enter into the cells now here comes our very important point when this oxygen enters in the cell then inside the cell if this oxygen is utilized in breaking the food and then energy is produced this kind of process is actually known as aerobic respiration got here we told you people that the breakdown of the food to release the energy is called respiration if this breakdown is done by mean of the oxygen that is called as aerobic respiration and if this breakdown is done without oxygen inside the cell then is known as anaerobic respiration so both the 
aerobic and anaerobic respirations take place inside the cell now aerobic actually it consumes oxygen and anaerobic it is just without oxygen the breakdown of the food and energy is produced and that is the very cause i was telling people about that do not write the word oxygen the term oxygen do not use that while you're defining the respiration if you're using they are just defining a specific type you're not defining the respiration you're actually defining the specific type of respiration so don't use oxygen term while you are defining the respiration i hope you got what i spoke about well so our respiration is actually of two types aerobic and anaerobic and regarding steps point of view we have three okay external internal cellular respiration and basically regarding this definition regarding the breakdown of the food we have two types that is aerobic and anaerobic respiration i hope you got the classification of the respiration regarding the steps we have three and regarding the metabolism of the food we have two aerobic and anaerobic now let's come towards the fifth point like the shape of the lungs so here we have two lungs left and right the left one is actually having a kind of uh, you can say a depression and further it is composed of two lobes due to a fissure that is the oblique fissure and in the right one we have two fissures the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure now these fissures are actually uh, dividing our lungs into lobes so totally we have one two three four five lobes in the right we have three lobes in the left we have two lobes due to one fissure oblique fissure here we have two lobes due to two fissures we have we have three lobes fissure number one the horizontal number two the oblique here we got three lobes superior middle inferior superior inferior just no middle so that's the main understanding regarding the shape of the lungs and one point remaining here is that this depression uh, we can see a notch named as cardiac notch now why is it called as cardiac notch because it is providing the area that to accommodate the heart okay so your heart is actually uh, present in between the lungs known as mediastinum and the heart whenever we are defining the heart and you guys might remember when we were defining the heart the physiology and anatomy of the heart we told that it is a kind of uh, uh, present in the mediastinum and tilted towards the left so this is the very region where the heart is located the mediastinum and due to this tilt of the heart here we get the uh, cardiac notch in the lung that's it very simple understanding now let's come towards the respiratory parts the sixth part of the today's lecture respiratory parts you can say respiration system is actually composed of three very important and basic parts the very first part is the airways which includes your nostrils pharynx larynx these uh, trachea bronchi and the very second point is the lungs and the third very basic and important part is the muscles you have here uh, the, the dome shaped muscle known as the diaphragm and the muscles of the ribs, intercostal muscles. These all play a very important role in the respiration.